Right, my friends, uh, this is my video, my Booker Prize video on Paul Auster's 4321. Um, if you watch this channel regularly, you will know that I'm over a week late with this video. Uh, that's partly because this book, as I will discuss, is extraordinarily long, um, and partly as well because I was very tired last weekend and uh, prioritised self-care over YouTube. I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyway, Paul Auster's 4321. So this is, I'll talk a little bit about what the, what the book is and then I'll, then I'll give you some, some views. Um, partly because not many people, I've, I've not seen many videos where people have actually got to the end of this. Uh, so having got to the end, I feel as though I need to say what I think. So this is a, to an English person at least, a quintessentially American 20th century book. Um, it is about a, uh, a Jewish boy um, who's only ever referred to really by his surname, Ferguson, who was born in 1947 um, and he therefore lives through a lot of the defining features of American um, 20th century life. Uh, so there's a lot in the book about, about race relations, there is a lot about Vietnam, there's a lot about um, Kennedy and Nixon. Um, and the book also opens with a large number of pages um, about the immigration saga of Ferguson's parents and grandparents, so Jewish immigration into New York from the beginning of the 20th century. So it's, it's very American, and you also get lots of people going off to summer camp. Um, and there's a lot about family relationships in there as well. It's a, it's a big, wide, generous book in the topics it covers. It is... Um, mostly very well written, so it's, it's sort of verbal pyrotechnics all the way through. Austin knows how to put a sentence together and he does that well. Um, and the 4321 of the title is to do with um, different versions of the same character of this, uh, of this young man, Ferguson, that play off each other through the book. So rather than having a straightforward narration of his life, we end up with four different narrations of his life, all of which run at the same time, and we, we sort of swap between them without that being particularly signalled. So you end up with this um, rather confusing uh, switching between different versions of Ferguson's story. Um, but trying to keep those apart, I don't think, is really Oster's point, and that's, there's, a, there's a richness in that, which is, which is quite exciting. It also, as a book, takes the... Um, in, in a world in which many writers are writing from very restri restricted viewpoints and often from first person view viewpoints, this book takes the idea of the omniscient narrator almost to ex its extreme. Um, it's, it's not only, the, the narrator is not only able to know the details of four versions of the character's life, but also knows, can get inside the head of his ancestors. Um, and of every single minor character who appears in the book. So again, there's a richness that comes from that that, um, that is not actually that common in, um, I mean, traditional third-person narration is, is, is um, less used now than it used to be. So that's what the book's about. Um, and I had different reactions to it as I went through. I mean, my, my initial reaction as I went through the first third or so of the book, which is the, the immigration saga plus... Ferguson up to age, I don't know, 12 or so, um, was not that positive. Um, I, didn't, I didn't find there was anything particularly wrong with the book, but I didn't find it particularly engaging. And it is a, it's a wordy novel. So that, that was 300 pages, which I wasn't finding particularly either intellectually or emotionally engaging. And it absolutely wasn't uh, to do with the quality of the writing. Um, it is just the pace is absolutely glacial um, and I struggled through the first third with the I didn't feel that what Oster was saying was compelling enough for me to want to um, read through the vast number of words that he had wanted to put on the page um, I also had another struggle with the first third which was that this this boy who was um, first newborn and then slowly progressed, very slowly progressed through to age 10 or 12 or so, was unbelievably precocious. Um, he apparently had deep psychological insights about everyone around him, though he was only sort of age seven or so, and he expressed these in extraordinarily adult uh, language. And I just didn't believe it. So I was in this situation of a 
a very slow paced novel um, about a child I didn't believe in. So the first third I found thoroughly disappointing and had I not needed to read it for my book list, I would not have read it all. But then things began to change. So when I got to the middle, we got to um, Ferguson at age 15, 16, um, and then a bit later. And by this point, the character was much more compelling. Um, and I was finding the structure more compelling as well. So once the four different narrative threads had been established, there was an interesting symmetry between all of the different stories that were being told. So Oster doesn't completely separate the four stories. They're not all taking place in wildly different places with different casts of characters. It's the same characters that appear, so Ferguson's family and close friends and uh, sort of step families as various divorces and remarriages happen. And those people are all the same people, regardless of which of the plot strands they are in. So you then get a rather interesting effect of characters being affected only by the circumstances of the plot um, and not by who they actually are. And that I found exciting and and formally interesting. Um, almost, almost as though there were sort of different cards being shuffled, shuffled into different combinations and then different games were being played with them. I thought that was fun. Um, there, there are also lots of comments going through the book um, about the... Uh, the fact that all of these different stories are being told. There are lots of comments about things being double, about people's stories not being straightforward, about people not knowing quite who they are um, and maybe we have different versions of ourselves. And in a less good author's hands, those would have been really obtrusive. In this case, actually they weren't. Um, I I was quite harsh on Oster as I went through because I was I had been going at the book for quite some time by this stage. Um, but try as I might to argue that these were really obtrusive, crude comments. Actually, they were they were very neatly woven into the narrative and they added a richness rather than rather than being an irritation. And there was a, a feeling through the whole novel that um, uh, what Oster was playing off, what Oster was riffing off was the the, the Robert Frost. Um, road less travelled. Uh, we have two paths diverging in a wood, or in this case, four paths diverging in a wood, and we see what makes the difference in in each one. Um, so that, by the centre of the novel, was was really quite interesting for me. Um, so then it was a huge disappointment uh, when we got towards the end, and um, and I won't tell you, I won't spoil it um, by telling you exactly what the sort of narrative trick is at the end. But there is a narrative trick at the end, which I half saw coming. Um, and which, when it comes, is introduced in such a blatant, crude, obtrusive way um, that, that, for me, it, it ruined really a lot of what had gone before. Um, and so I ended up being less... Uh, forgiving of the tricks that Oster had played earlier than I otherwise would have been. And so where I came out was, I'm not sure the, so this is a long book, it's 880 pages. Um, I would wave it at you, but I read it on Kindle. Um, and I'm not sure the length is necessary. So what you get at various stages is, so Ferguson as a young child likes Laurel and Hardy films. So you get a 10 or 15 page description of all of these Laurel and Hardy films that he has seen. Um, he also is a budding writer. So rather than mentioning a bit about what he's writing, we get the whole of various of his adolescent efforts at writing short stories. Um, it doesn't feel at any stage as though anyone editor, Oster, anyone else, has really asked, is this necessary? And to a great extent, the quality of the writing does carry it. Um, it would have been much more wearing in a less good writer, but I wasn't convinced that the, um, that the length was any more than Oster showing off what he could do. Um, if you disagree, do tell me in the comments, but that was, that was my sense. And I also... Um, it's also ultimately a book about a, the, cent the story at the centre is a young man who grows up to be a writer. And there are, there are obviously an awful lot of novels out there um, where writers write 
um, veiled autographical novels about how what it was like to become a writer. And to be honest, most of them are not very good. And I, um, I went back and looked at Oster's own biography, having finished this, and sure enough, um, Ferguson, the character, was born in the same year in Aust as Oster, 1947, um, in New York. And so I suspect there is an awful lot of Oster and his experiences in there. And that gives a, a huge richness when it talks about um, riots in uh, Newark and in Harlem, for example, or it talks about uh, student uh, protests in 1968. Um, and as I say, it is, it's, not, uh, it's not in any way a bad novel about someone growing up as a writer. My, my overall sense, as I say, was that there's a lot to be said for this novel. There really is. The first third is painful. Um, if you can get past the first third, it then blossoms. Um, but to be honest, uh, Ulysses comes in at 900 pages. Uh, I'm a massive fan of Ulysses. I reread it. Um, Joyce can fill 900 pages. I'm not sure that Oster really can.